Alright. Lovely. Home just in time, I guess. Strange to think of this place as my home, though. Hey, Serrano. Where's the last batch of alchemy ingredients I asked you for? Ah, uh, yes, that. There were, well, complications. I don't want to hear about it. I want what I asked for. Yes, hey, sir, of course. I'll see to it. Um. <coughs> Arden? I'm home. Ah, uh, Ingra, sorry. I didn't hear, apparently. You all right? Oh, fine. Peachy. Yeah, all right. I'm a little off my stride. Don't worry about it. Arden, if this is going to work, we at very least have to trust each other. Come on, let's go somewhere a bit quieter. Yeah, good idea. Yikes. We've made some good progress on the main hall, but this place is still a mess. Much like your inner workings right now, I'd wager. Yeah, alright, I'm... Well, do you want the weird news first or the weirder news? You had an eventful few days, sounds like. Weirdest first, everything after that will seem normal by comparison. Okay, so I had to chat with Himaeus Mora. What? Oh yeah, I had this whole thing with a lexicon I had to take back to a madman who, as it turns out, is working for Hermes Mora and thinks the heart of Lorcan is stuck in a dwarven lockbox. He gave me an extractor thing so I could gather up a bunch of blood and try to unlock it, which I'm 90% sure goes against how bloodlines work, but hey, what do I know? I'm just a historian. Gonna do it? I don't know, maybe if it ever comes up again. Hermes Mora wants me to, and for that reason alone I probably won't, since, you know, I'd rather not have my soul handed over to a slimy, multi-eyeballed tentacle monster in the event of an untimely demise. It's that or Molag Ball at this point. Oh. Stendhal saved me, that puts a twist on things. So I take it you have a plan for your afterlife? There's either the spiral skein or I join my mother and ancestors in hunting grounds. I guess I'll find out if anyone manages to kill me. You know, I did rather expect to be dead somewhere around, say, 40 years from now, 50 maybe. I have no idea what to do with a hundred years, let alone an eternity. With any luck, we'll be able to help each other there. Frankly, I didn't expect to see 80, and here I am at 114, looking at facing down... Who knows how long. Yeah. I... I actually thought about that while you were away, and... I'm looking forward to seeing the world change with you. I really hope we don't end up hating each other. Oh, me too. So the other weird news, there's a new student at the college. An Ultima girl. Interesting timing. That's what I thought too. On the one hand, I don't want to trust her because that's very suspicious. On the other... I mean... I'm the Archmage and Colovian. I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to distrust her just because she's an Ultima. Did you catch her name? No. She's been keeping pretty quiet, seems like. That's... suspect. Thank you! I mean... I don't want to be like that. I don't want people to think... Arden, I doubt anyone's gonna think you're being unreasonable over this. I will. She reminds me of Ancano back when I first met him. Nobody would even talk to him. Nobody trusted him. Including me, until my mother died, and he was the only one who realized I was being a complete ass because I'd lost her. He went through so much crap until Siggy and I started standing up for him. I'm not gonna say what I'm thinking, but you know what I'm thinking. Yeah, I know. He played me like a harp. I'm torn. I don't want to make the same mistakes as I did with him. I don't want a Thalmor agent breathing down my neck, but I don't want to alienate a student just because of a background. I had to work like all oblivion to... I don't know, unlearn everything, I guess. I grew up hating the Ultima because of the war, and it took some serious work on my part to get around it. You know what it's like trying to forgive someone who killed a family member? Yes. 
Oh. Shit, I'm so sorry. My... My mother. Thalmor. I never forgave them, but I did learn to separate agents from civilians eventually. It was probably easy for me since I'm also an elf, but it's still hard. Yeah. My father died in the Battle of the Red Ring. I probably told you that before, but yeah. I was eight. I was probably the equivalent of an Imperial's 14. Maybe younger. Felt younger. Kind of blocked a lot of that memory. You're right. I don't want to talk about it. Maybe someday, but not now. Right. Well, thank you for even that much, and sorry I kind of dumped my whole brain on your lap there. I asked for it. I could use a distraction right about now. Oh, hey. You're fine. I'm here. So, how did your business go? Anything you can tell me about? <laughs> Wrapped up a loose end, cracked my head open fighting some Drago, that was fun. In wrath. Not badly. Led like anything, but I've had worse. If I had a proper functioning heart anymore, you would be arresting it right about now. Sorry. I went on a job with Zaytest, too. She's come a long way, I'm proud of her. You're lovely, you know that? I don't believe that specific word has ever been applied to me. <laughs> well, I'm happy to be your first, then. Thanks. Panic averted, for now. Sorry I scared you. Oh, believe me, I of all people know that's not something one can just... control. You get panicky, too. Well, not as much as I used to, but... sometimes. So, how long are you back for? Long as I want to be. Long as you need me around. I need to go check in with my people once in a while, but I also don't want to make an obvious pattern, you know? I need to make some plans, and you're good at that. I might need your help if you can do it without knowing the specifics. Only if you help me with the heavy lifting here. That's a lot of rubble that needs to get moved, and while I'm not as much of a limp noodle as I used to be, it'll be easier with at least two people. Fira would probably help, too, if you don't mind the... Furiness. <laughs> well, we'll see. I need to make a plan of my own. I'm not looking forward to that passage we came through with all the bones and... Everything. I will, in fact, take care of the spider corpses for you. Oh, blessed be, sweet Lady Mara. <laughs> You're too cute, hon. Hon! And what would you have me call you? I'd rather it not be my dear. It makes me sound, well, condescending for one thing. You'll come up with something. Come on, let's go get a plan situated before we start thinking too hard about this mess. You are lovely. Cantangerous, but lovely. Shut up, my lord. Make me, Vanquisher. So, what kind of planning do you need help with? Well, how much are you comfortable knowing? I'd prefer you keep anything that could get me killed to yourself. I don't fancy meeting Molag Bal in person just yet. Fair enough. An analogy, then. Let's say... Well, your father was a legionnaire, right? A damn good one, too. I can't remember what rank he had, but that's what got me into studying strategy and tactics as a kid. Alright, well, let's imagine a legion. A whole legion. Specializing in covert operations, suffered a sudden betrayal so catastrophic their forces now number in the single digits. Nobody is supposed to know that they exist, and while most of those left have been in the organization for a while, the structure and support channels are almost entirely cut. Oh, holy Mara. Uh, can I ask who you work for? You, me, and Dom right at the moment. Mafala, her scene. For the sake of the analogy, I'd be the chief commanding officer for this band. You're running some kind of covert... Not a bandit gang, but something specialized. 
Yes. Alright, here's a better analogy. Imagine the Morag Tong consisted of four veterans and a courier. Hakei's balls, that would be impossible! That's the kind of situation I'm dealing with. Trying to rebuild something that almost got wiped out in a way that's... I guess sustainable would be the best word. I mean, I'm just an architecture guy. I don't know if I could help there. Just an architecture guy, says the man who dethroned a thousand-year-old vampire lord and immediately changed the rules. Alright, but I had a few days to think ahead. What are you smiling about? You. Well, this castle isn't going to repair itself. This gives you something to think about while we move rubble anyway. True. Were it me, I'd be focusing on the base of operations first so they actually have somewhere safe and clean to retreat to. You don't need three days, do you? Cayman. I mean, a lot of it is just logic. First, feed the crew, make sure they have somewhere to sleep, somewhere to call home, establish contact with the higher-ups. In this situation, I am the higher-ups. I may be able to reach out to another organization, but they're also kind of in the pits right now. Ha. <laughs> Aha. Right. Well, maybe I do need more time to think about it. Yeah, that goes for both of us. I'm a scout, not a battle reeve. This is all new to me. Battle reeve? I grew up in Albemarie occupied Valenwood. Don't look at me like that. Oh, damn. I didn't know you could draw. What are you- Oh! The, uh, plans for the college? Yeah. Where'd you learn to do that? Self-taught, mostly. I picked up a few pointers from a carpenter back home, but... I don't know, I've always had an eye for it, I guess. Any other talents you've been hiding this whole time? <laughs> Not really. Music? I've been told I couldn't carry a tune in a bucket. How about you? Uh, I suppose singing is kind of out of the picture, huh? Well, I suppose I could try, but... Nah. Never been the musical type. Decent carver, but... Yeah. Not much of an artist. Carving? Bone. Used to make little ornaments when I was a kid. Lost the practice for a while, but I picked it back up again when I was living in Cyrodiil. Oh, wait. You were in Cyrodiil for a while? Yeah. Doubt we ever crossed paths, though. It's a big province. Yeah, that's fair. You know, sorry if I asked this before, but how come you still abide by the Green Pact if you don't worship Ifrey? Reminds me of home. For a while, I couldn't abide by the Green Pact. I just... It was part of reclaiming myself, I guess. I see. I I'm not gonna ask. Probably for the best. Can I ask about the Stendar thing? The what? You swear on the Divine's a hell of a lot for a vampire. Mara, I get. But Stendar? Oh, <laughs> well, habit, I guess. Coral has a chapel of Stendar and I spent a lot of time there before I left for the Imperial City. I I'm not like the Vigilance, though. I just... Well, he's supposed to be the god of mercy, right? Among other things, as far as I'm aware. Well, I spent a lot of time praying for mercy when I was younger. Because of the war? No. Because I was different. Coral isn't exactly the most tolerant place. The other kids and no few adults thought I was, well, wrong. That's... You know, I'm glad I grew up in a place where the entire culture's biggest problem was with shape-shifting. Makes things like who a person likes seem kind of trivial by comparison. <laughs> I imagine so. You don't seem as bitter about it as you could be. Thankfully, I'm a talented mage. Let's just say, between the College of Whispers and the Synod Conclave, I found plenty of people like me. Organizational rivalry notwithstanding. Turns out my just tend to be a little on the weird side for one reason or another. Can I 
ask how you realized you were- I swing both ways. Frankly, I never questioned it. Never had much reason to, even outside Valenwood. Oh. Well then. <laughs> I'm learning something new about you every day. I owe you a conversation about the Heartlanders, don't I? The what? Oh, you mean the aliens? Yes. What do you want to know? Oh, Mara. Uh, I don't know. Do all Bosma call them Heartlanders? I doubt it. Might be a quirk of my family. Considering where a lot of them ended up, maybe aliens is the most appropriate term. Hidden ones. Yep. In plain sight, usually. I guess I should ask how much you know about them already. Their philosophy on magic, mostly. A bit of history. All that Alessian Rebellion stuff, which, I mean... I probably shouldn't comment on that being a Colovian talking to an elf. You think it was justified? Well, I mean... How can anyone justify that much bloodshed? No offense to you personally, but the Imperials have been pretty damn good at that. Justifying bloodshed. From where I'm standing, the Alessian Order was no better than the Thalmor. Oh, uh... I mean, I do agree with you. Kind of. It's just... That far back, no one really knows what was true and what was embellishment. What they did to the Needs was awful. Inhumane in some places. And Pelinor Whitestrake would have made Mehrun's Dagon look like one of Mara's handmaidens. Sorry. Fewer generations between my people and the past. This is not the conversation I expected to be having, honestly. You wanted to know about my perspective. I can't speak for all, or even most, Bosmer, but there you have it. We haven't forgotten. Sorry. Eh, don't be. It was a long time ago, and you had nothing to do with it. It just... Some of the shit that goes on in Valenwood because of the Thalmor dredges up old wounds, you know? I can't pretend to even imagine, frankly. <laughs> you know, when I asked about this, I was more thinking of like, did any of the architecture survive in a better state than Cyrodiil and whatnot? I wasn't really... I, I understand if you'd want to keep me on the outside, though. I feel like maybe we Imperials have done too good a job sticking our noses where they don't belong. True. You at least recognize how screwed up that particular period of time was. Yeah. Yeah, I do. My family kept a shrine. Huh? Well, my mother. Her mother. Her grandmother. Going back through all the women in my family. We maintained a shrine of her scene that went back to some of the first aliens to flee from the Alessian Order. They were hunters, providers, farmers. They weren't bloodthirsty and cruel, they were just people, like any people, trying to make a living. They did well in Valenwood, being hunters. Learned from their new neighbors, blended in, hid, passed down their stories from generation to generation. And we maintained their home and their shrine even through Molag Ball's bullshit in the Second Era. Even through the Oblivion Crisis. Who's keeping the shrine now? I... Oh. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Sometimes I wish I had a sister. Or was a daughter instead of a son. There's no one left. Just me. Hey, I'm sorry, I didn't mean... In wrath. I... Don't... Talk about this. Hey. Yeah, it's... It's alright, I mean, it's not... L let's take a break from this, huh? Come here. I've got a perfectly good shoulder if you need it.
Arden. In reference to the thing about Second Era Daedric Lowell, you be careful, lad. That's a rabbit hole down which the greatest minds have found themselves stuck and turned around. I assume you got there by way of an architecture-related tangent, knowing you. Glad to hear you found yourself a decent team, however. Much as you might fight it, Lone Wolf just doesn't agree with you. You need people. When the letters stopped after you finished your thesis, we both worried the solitude had gotten to you. Although Sigwin assured me you were working on a big project. You do tend to get a bit caught up, but don't we all? As far as your other concerns, we're doing our best to put together a restoration team. Not healers, builders. But as soon as we mention Winterhold, folks around here get jumpy. Nobody wants to be trying to rebuild a fortress. They think it's a fortress. I suspect it's more like any university building. In the middle of a civil war. And nobody wants to deal with the dragons. Gods, lad, we were all joking about it, but then some folks out in Jahana heard one in the Druidark Mountains. Never saw the beast, but they heard it. We've had folks lose relatives and the fighting over there, too. Assuming at least one of those problems gets solved, I might be able to get a brave enough team together, but right at the moment our hands are tied. Siggy's even been contacting people from back in Cyrodiil. Just got news back that Halden. You remember Halden, the red guard with the obsession with alien weather magic. Met his end somewhere out in the Sea of Ghosts. Shame that. And yet another reason nobody wants to sail over to Winterhold. I've been looking into that other matter for you. So far I've not found anything with the name Harkon specifically. I've found a few references to one Hakon One-Eye, though his tales go back to the Marethic era, supposedly. There's also Heramir, but you knew about him already, and I doubt you'd be looking for a reference to an alien sorcerer. Haven't been able to find anything closer than that, other than a rather dubious and extensive Second Era journal detailing an exploration of Northwestern Skyrim. There may be something in it, but if I'm looking for names and mentions of kings alone, it may take a while. Any other information would be useful. It's been a while since we had a good project like this. Something besides all that more in legends regarding traitors and the woodland man, anyway. Keep kicking, lad. Siggy sends her love. Love, dear. I'm home. You look comfy. Oh. Welcome back. How's your job go? Eh, not my cleanest work ever, but the travel was pretty smooth. So, Thieves Guild then? <laughs> no, not quite. Keep guessing, hon. Hun. What you got there? Ah! Uh, Lopter and Sigwin wrote me back. I popped down to Dragonbridge while you were away and a courier found me. Lopter and Sigwin. I recognize one of those names. Yarnvita's estranged husband, right? Yep. He, Sigwin, Ancano, and I were all on the same expedition team back at the College of Whispers. We've mostly kept up over the years. Long silences because I've gotten, well, distracted and holed up in my own head, notwithstanding. Gotcha. I'm gonna go lay down for a bit. Or chat with Daedric Princes. Not sure which yet. It was a long ride either way and a long hike in from solitude. <laughs> Alright. I won't go hammering rocks without you. Uh, would, would you mind terribly if I told them about you? Lofter and Sigwin, I mean. What? That we're... Well, I mean... I know secrecy is important to you. Especially your name. I... Don't really want to write about you without your permission? That's considerate of you. I mean, I may not understand why you're so closed off about some things, but I do respect it. I would appreciate it if you don't mention my name, but otherwise go for it. I take it they didn't know about Ancano either. Thanks. And no, none of us did. I don't have the heart to tell them. I mean, they knew he got called back and that he was here on Thalmor business, but... You alright? I'm... Honestly, not sure. I'm here if you need me. I think I just need a distraction. But thank you. You know where I'll be, hun. Uh, actually, we cleared out enough that... I'm not sure about that anymore? Right. I'll most likely be curled up in front of the fire in the North Tower. 
I may be a vampire, but I'm also a Bosmer, and it's still damn cold out there. To quote you, I need to go be weak in peace. <laughs> I'll go be warm, then. We'll need your strength tomorrow to clear out the last bit of rubble from that big room in there, and then... It's on to the ruins. Oh, joy. Lobder, I have indeed taken on another architecture-related tangent. Some things never change with me. I would call it a restoration, but it's not quite so involved. We've been clearing out the old bones and cobwebs and various rubble out of an old neglected castle. It seemed like a mammoth undertaking at first task, but mostly it's just making sure what stonework remains is still sound while clearing out various debris, replacing mortar, fixing old furniture, and dusting. The largest piece of this project so far has been chipping out part of an old tower that almost entirely collapsed. I'm not sure what to put into it yet. It's still very much a work in progress, but my partner is quite capable. He's been a great help in all this. Not only is he much stronger than one would expect from a Bosma, he's taken up the ever-important mantle of that person who must remind Arden when he's overlooked the obvious in favor of the overcomplicated once again. I'm honestly surprised I've gotten as far as I have without such a person. Much as some of our colleagues may have bemoaned your gruff Nordic ways, I found your practicality quite useful. As for the other project, well, supposedly the Dragonborn got to the heart of our more egregious pest problem. One would think that means the dragons are on their way out, but it seems to be somewhat the opposite. She killed their leader, but without a head on it, the rest of this snake is thrashing about. One would be forgiven for thinking the dragons have gotten stronger, more brazen. On the other hand, she also managed to engineer a peace treaty between General Tullius and Ulfric Stormcloak. Don't ask me how she did it. Miss Mia Kinoa is even more airheaded than I am sometimes, though I suspect she's more competent than she lets on. All of which is to say, I wouldn't ever expect you to sail anywhere in the Sea of Ghosts in the middle of winter, but should you manage to get a crew together who's brave enough come spring, I may be able to hire you a bodyguard who specializes in killing dragons. And speaking of strange and wonderful things, I happened to cross both your ex-wife and your granddaughter not long after I sent that last letter. Mordgood seems to be a capable young warrior. She has a lot of potential and a heart for heroism, which... Honestly, reminds me of a younger version of me. I do hope that heart doesn't get her into trouble. Yanvid is in good health and appears to be just as ferocious as you described her. I'm not sure how much you'd care to hear of her, but I wanted to let you know anyway. We don't exactly get along, but honestly, what else would anyone expect of a Nord warrior and an Imperial mage in times like these? Thankfully, it hasn't come to blows, though. Yet. Anyway... Apologies again for the novel. It's been a long time and I feel as though I've somewhat neglected reaching out to anyone. My partner is working to change that somewhat. I don't think it's a conscious effort on his part, merely a byproduct of both of us mutually working through old pains with each other and trying our best not to blunder headlong into sore spots. Admittedly, he's done a better job of not blundering than I have, but he's had more time to accrue scars. I hope someday I'll be able to introduce him to you two. All my heart to you and Sigwin. Adinius Perseus Welk, Archmage. So I've been thinking about your Morag Tong problem. Huh? Analogy thing. Oh, right. Go on. I realized I don't really have enough information about the question. Is it a matter of resources, or...? You know, that's a good point. I was thinking of... Well, rebuilding it to its former glory is kind of a pompous way to put it, but I guess that's what I was thinking. Ah, so that'd be a personnel issue. It's kind of an everything issue. If we don't have enough resources to support the people, then what's the point of having more people? Did I just solve your problem by accident? In a way. Gave me a different perspective, at least. So spell it out for me again? Maybe rephrase it somewhat? Alright. I'm the leader of a secret organization that's down to a handful of people and still trying to find its footing. So the problem being how to get some traction back? Something like that. 
were contractors, for lack of a better term, and I'm still not sure how the old leader did things. All I know is that it worked and provided a necessary balance for society in general. So, no jobs, no people, but no people, nobody thinks you're still around, so the jobs dry up. Pretty much. Ooh. Yeah, that's a pretty big problem. Yeah. I'm fairly certain our potential clients are desperate enough to call on our help, regardless of whether or not they believe we're still around, but... I don't know if it's enough. And you have, what, four members of this team that are actually trained to do whatever it is you do? Five, technically, with a sixth in training, but most of us also have ancillary duties. If it were me, I'd focus on getting that student trained up. Since you can't really go around actively recruiting people? Yeah. We're back to square one. It's a small enough venture now that I can basically shape it however I see fit. We have some conventions to adhere to lest we suffer the same fate again, but... That's what I'm really struggling with. In a lot of ways, we are, or used to be, something like an outlet for the people who just don't fit into everyday society. When I first joined, back in the latter years of the Great War, we got people likely to cause trouble off the streets and gave them something to do. How did something like that end up... Well, how you've described it? A series of betrayals and some good old-fashioned greed. With any luck, we're on a new chapter in this story. So you want to get it back to how it was? If I can. Kind of like what you're doing with this place, actually. Play by the rules and you get a safe place to stay and a way to keep going. I can't pretend I can reintegrate my people into normal society any more than Clan Volgahar can. We're in the same boat there. None of these people would make it as farmers or innkeepers or couriers or even guards or legionnaires. They're mostly just different. Like us. Like us. So, do what I did. Send the word out along any channels you might still have open to you. See if Dom will help if she knows what you do. She does. And no, she won't tell you. <laughs> Damn, worth a shot. And I'm just about the worst at giving speeches, so I can't exactly do that. How'd she manage that in three days, anyway? I don't know, I guess I just... thought about what was at the heart of Harkin's message and how I'd do it differently. He wanted to protect all vampires, but he took it to an extreme. I just... brought that back down to Nen, I guess. Rather than blaming the sun for our issues, I... took responsibility for them. I don't know, it seemed like no one else was going to do it. The Volgahar have this narrative of being mysterious and powerful and above all the other vampires. Figured if we keep ignoring what the quote-unquote lesser vampires are doing, it'd be a great way to invite war with the Dawnguard if no one else. The more problems the random, unaffiliated vampires cause, the more trouble we get in. If we have allies among the living, well, that could work in our favour, provided we don't screw it up. We like to think of ourselves as apex predators, but we're really at their mercy. As we stand now, we're parasites. But we could be symbiotic rather than destructive. We have a lot of strengths that mortals could make good use of. We're strong, we're fast, we can see in the dark, and of course, <laughs> we rely on them on a fundamental level. I'd rather not make them our enemies any more than we already have. I think I know my problem. Oh? I lack your imagination. <laughs> Aw. Uh, was I rambling? I was rambling again, wasn't I? I? I don't have much of an imagination, I just lay it all out and look at it sideways. I'm trying to compliment you, hon. <laughs> well, uh, well I, I don't have your- Just take the compliment. Cayman. You're lovely. Thanks. <laughs> we'll work on it. Oh, crap. What? We should probably go get Valyrica out of the Soul Cairn. What? Oh, yeah. Serana and I never told you, but her mother refused to come back out until Harkin was dealt with. As a daughter of Cold Harbor, 
Well, you can kind of see where she's coming from. And you're just telling me this now? I kind of had a lot to think about in the interim. That's fair. Alright, come on, let's go get Serana and hopefully not die retrieving her mother. <laughs> Don't worry, you can hold my hand if you get scared. In wrath, I swear to Mara. Yes. Come on. Alright, so this is going to be interesting because both of you have been to the Soul Cairn and I have absolutely no idea what to expect. You're grinning at me again. Okay, let's just get this over with, shall we? Uh, right. Can't find my way around this bloody castle anymore. I'm Garen. I am above the petty squabbles here. I have lived for far too long to be bothered with them. Yes, we've heard it before. <laughs> okay, so, uh, apologies for the continued mess, Serana. I didn't really want to... I don't even want to know. I, I didn't want to touch anything before we got your mother back. Where did I put the sword? Right. So, it's still a little bit made of cobwebs and whatnot. Oh. Jeez, you blend in. Yeah, sorry about that. Oh, Kate, that feels weird. Stop. Ooh. Oh, all right. Yeah, that's pretty much the face I made, too. Eww. It's, it's, it's... Ooh. My face, the, the tattoos, feel a little weird. Itchy. I'm guessing I probably should not stay here very long for the sake of my own face and my health. To say nothing of the fact that this is absolutely depressing. Hey, Arden. Uh huh. Look up. Who's there? Or down. <laughs> Let me look up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna go. We're gonna go. We're getting out of here. With Valyrica, obviously. It's just occurred to me that I've never actually met Valyrica. Should I be worried about that? I don't think so. I'd tell her I had someone working on the outside. <laughs> right. This is going to be fun. Oh. Ooh. Let's get the... Yeah, you... I would say you get used to it, but you really don't. Yeah, that's a little terrifying, actually. Wait. Oh, behind me. Uh. Done. Oh. Really? <laughs> kind of missed going on adventures with you. Yeah, I know that feeling. Remember when I told you about smacking my head open? Fighting some Draga? Yeah. Well, part of the reason that happened was because I didn't have you watching my back. I definitely got used to it. Uh, 
Uh, so this is the place. Yeah. The lyrica should be around here somewhere. Oh. Uh, that'll be the woman himself, I suspect. Yeah. Go ahead, you're the one who killed Harkin after all. I'm nervous. Uh, hi. Uh, you've, you've met Ingrath. My name is Arden. We haven't had the pleasure yet, but... You appear to have something on your mind. What is it? Straight to the point, then. Uh, Harkin is dead. What? Are you certain? Mm-hmm. I, uh... It was a bit of a mess. I blew him up in a fireball. Then I see nothing preventing my return to Tamriel. Allow me to gather some of my things, and I'll head back to Castle Volkahar. And from the bottom of my heart, I thank you. All right, uh, we'll see you back. Um, we've been working on cleaning up the castle, by the way. I didn't touch anything in your, in your laboratory. Everything's fine. And, uh, and we'll get going. I, yeah. But we don't have any petty squabbles, as Gary Marathi would put it. Um, we should probably just go. All right. Uh, we'll see you in Volkaha. Vol Volka. Yeah. Some vampire lord I am. <laughs> You're charming. And apparently only good with words when you've planned for it. Yeah, that pretty much is me in a nutshell. Welk shell, I suppose. <laughs> you know, I've just... I I've only just now appreciated the irony that whelks are carnivorous snails. And now I'm... How in all mundus did you ever learn that whelks are carnivorous snails? Well, you know, when you're named after such a thing, you get curious. You tell me you've never been curious as to why your name is Stormsong. Actually... Well, maybe that's a story for another day. Oh, don't tell me that's not your real name. It's... Oh, good grief! Alright, I'll put it this way. It's real enough. I've had it for longer than I've had my given name, if that tells you anything. Someday I will get to the bottom of you. Oh jeez, that sounded wrong, I'm sorry. Someday... There will be more- uh, no more layers. But I am honestly quite enjoying the mystery that you are, so. Keep being mysterious, I guess. I think we've done about as much as we possibly can. It looks like the Lyrica mine uh, finally made a way back. With the garden there. You seem a little tired. I mean, we've been hauling rub of rubble for the last week straight. Probably more. Yeah, maybe I am a little tired. Should probably uh, 
sends some kind of report to Dominique. Or something. We should probably go check in on Valyrica. Uh, that's a good pro- uh, a good- a good point. Come on. Do I fluster you? I <laughs> Maybe. Excuse me, Garrett. I am above the petty squabbles. Oh, hi. Oh, sorry. Admiring the uh, sun set, I suppose. Yeah. Must be just waking up. Or still waking up, rather. And it's freezing. It really is freezing. Good grief. All right. Oh! And she dusted. There she is. Lyrica. Oh. Excuse me. Sorry. Having some eye difficulties. Welcome back. How are you settling in? I trust you're keeping my daughter safe. Uh... Yeah, I mean, she hasn't really left. It, we haven't really left, except for very brief ventures. So now that you're settled back in here, what are your plans? Well, I think it's time I got back to my work as an alchemist. Oh, good. The Soul Cairn will offer a unique opportunity to continue my studies, and I intend to complete my research. In the meantime, if there are any potions you might need, Feel free to help yourself. Alright. Uh thanks. I'll let you get back to your to your business. Farewell. It was good to meet you. And and good to see that I'm not the only one who appreciates a clean study. <laughs> and I will not be going back down there again. Oh, you stayed out here? Yeah, I didn't really want to get in the way. You wouldn't get in the way. I can't believe you're just standing out here in the cold. I- I'm admiring the- the view- Don't worry. You- you- you're- Ah. 